Coming up on Talk is Cheap, you missed the chance to buy a ranch completely filled with aliens, interdimensional portals, time portals, ghosts, and whatnot uh, for $6.5 million. So maybe you're kind of lucky you didn't buy the Stardust Ranch. Coming up next. Where cheap is talk and talk is cheap. I am your host tonight, Dusty Long, and with me, as always, is oh hell no, the one and only Dan Hopewell. And to my far oh ooh. ooh, what happened to my far left? That's a good question. Hmm, maybe someone didn't get the date right. <laughs> as you can plainly tell, because you can't see uh, Pete, he's not here today. In this new age of digital technology, we can't use. <laughs> Electronic calendar. Right. <laughs> Great. I'm mean, a little. You can story even go. This. Hey, Shlomo, yeah. set an appointment for. <laughs> right. Everything. You don't have to type anymore. So, uh, what? Pete works with us, and I asked Pete earlier this week because um, the week prior, I showed up for recording, and we weren't recording. And Dan's dad did an awfully nice job of keeping that secret safe until tonight. I had no idea. He told me. I was like, I wondered why you sent me your topic a week early. Right? <laughs> Here so, we are. Not only did I show up a week early, then I talked to Pete and I made a joke out of it. He goes, well, I'm going to go ahead and email and make sure what date, because I thought it was Friday. He thought it was Saturday. So he was supposed to email Dan, make sure you got the date right, then email me your response. He never did. So I took it upon myself last night to message you and make sure that we were on top. Because I figured he just didn't send the email my way because I was right. He's not here. Because he didn't send me the email. <laughs> so <laughs> so we're going to cover probably three episodes. Three, three episodes without yeah. him. And he owes us some uh, Bloody Mary mix like he brought us at one night. Except I don't drink, so I don't know if you'd do anything for me. He said it's, something about some sauerkraut at one ooh, time. I haven't seen any of that. That's yet. right, yeah. Maybe you'll get the sauerkraut and I'll get the Bloody Mary mix. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so speaking of which, I, I've said this before. We filmed three episodes so I just threw a call number out, and we won't get to play these like, you know, you leave a message and it'll be on the next episode. These are going to be down the line, folks. And we did get a few here. So let's take a listen. We got our first message here from Connor. Yeah, this is Connor calling. Been checking out your videos on the Internet. You guys are awesome. You're the best out there. I would love to hear more about Bigfoot, though. I've been seeing him around. Keep up the good work. See, now that one was directed towards Pete, and he's not even here. <laughs> it's funny how he's not so, here, and yet I still feel as though he's with us somehow. Right. Yeah. So, Connor, uh, Pete's not here, but I will forward him the message. And I, we do have an extravaganza plan for this summer. Yes, we do. Yeah. That'll be fun. We're going to hunt I, some Bigfoot. Yeah. And, uh, I was just informed that's going to be a camping trip overnight. Yep. To see if uh, yeah. something comes and tries to eat us. I hate camping. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, goat. I do appreciate that. So our next caller is from Kevin Parks. Now, he's got a question about werewolves, but Kevin, you're pushing it a little bit here. We got like. I think you got to the two-minute mark, and I like to do one minute, but I'm going to let it go this time. Oh, hey, guys. My name's Kevin Parks. I'm in Costa Mesa, California. I uh, just had one quick question. Uh, I wanted to find out what your opinion was. And then after that, also, there's some other things that uh, later on I think uh, you guys would enjoy to talk about. I've already talked to the guys at Third Phase of Moon about this, and uh, we had a great conversation. But, um, so, yeah, I just wanted to find out. So there's the, you know, like, uh, werewolves and the dogmen thing. So, uh, and, you know, I don't even mean to sound weird or anything, but before I even knew what a werewolf was and before, uh, so I'm talking about being five, four years old, um, before I knew anything about werewolves or, you know, werewolf movies, what have you, um, I had a dream when uh, my family would always go to uh, this place called Deep Creek Lake in Maryland. And we would uh, take vacations there, you know what I mean? Because we had a cabin there with some boats. And uh, I had a dream. Um, this is way before I even knew what a werewolf was, or you know. So I, I had no clue what a werewolf was. But I had a dream that goddamn werewolves came into the cabin 
and killed my family. You know, it was a terrifying dream, and I'll never forget it. And then when I first, first saw my first werewolf movie that my Uncle John brought over, uh, which was The Howling back in the day, so we're talking early 80s, um, it just scared the shit out of me because I, I saw the thing that actually, you know, killed my family in my dream. So I'm just curious what you think about, you know, someone that ha saw something that is supposedly a myth, but I saw it in my dream before I had ever even heard about what this damn thing is. So I'm just curious about what you think about that. Uh, I appreciate all your work and uh, just became a subscriber and really enjoy your videos. So hope you guys are doing well. But uh, all right, I'll talk to you guys. These are Bye -bye. never just werewolves. They're goddamn werewolves. <laughs> I, mean, I, 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 don't like think, yeah, I don't think once he just said werewolves, he's like, goddamn werewolves. Well, thanks for calling in, Kevin. We appreciate the Absolutely. support and the subscription. And you, I did get your other message. We'll play that on the next episode. But so what do you think about this? Like he never seen a werewolf before. But yet he dreamed it. Uh, he's four or five, uh, had a dream about it. And you know me, I always got to play the devil's advocate on the show, which sometimes right. I absolutely hate. But five years old, you're going to school. Um, could he not remember somebody maybe mentioning something about a werewolf? And then that's what, that's what triggered the dream? So then they'd have to describe it probably. To, Somehow, you yeah. know, I mean, because you're at that age. I mean, I don't remember everything I was told. You know, I, I really don't. I, and then, uh, of course, like, We've brought up on the show before things that I never thought of. And then, you know, like when I first saw the Roswell uh, documentary and I looked at my mom and I was like four or five and I said I was there. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. You did. You did. And say she's that. like, yeah. no, son, you weren't. I'm like, no, I remember playing with that metal. And she was like, OK, <laughs> I went to church that Sunday. I'm pretty sure. See, that's really interesting because I think it could be like a reincarnation of the this. Yeah, that was your past life. Maybe so. And, and I don't know how much water that holds, but I don't know about this either because. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say that being said. He, that he could be have a past incarnation as a werewolf. He could have seen one in a past life or it could be on another dimension. It's all kind of interlinked. Like yeah. fairies. We've talked about fairies. Mm -hmm. They're kind of real here so so this is probably there's got to be something to this too yeah and I, I wanted to know if like the 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 more scientific minded side of me wants to say that he probably heard of it five years old you know in the 80s you know that's when we all grew up too we were roughly right around there there was a lot of you know zombies werewolves planet apes and stuff like that so i don't think it'd be that far-fetched to think that he overheard it and then he had a dream um but at the same time say he wasn't told anything about it this wouldn't be a reincarnate because it's his family that's getting attacked. So, I mean, that's kind of awkward, too. Maybe his a family did get attacked. And it may be in another parallel universe <laughs> yeah. or something. I don't know. But it, to me, it, it sounds more like he probably heard about it and then forgot about right. hearing about it. But even if he didn't, though, I mean, that, that, does, that is pretty interesting. Well, that's our thoughts there, Kevin. So, uh, oh no! <laughs> for what it's worth, I'm not a I'm not so, a scientist. So, I mean, I'm just speculating. That's our opinion. So, if you guys want to interact with us on the show, this has been kind of fun. This the start of something new here. So, the call in number is two five six five ten fifty two thirty four. That's two five six five ten K two D four. Leave a message. Say hi. If you have a topic suggestion, I'm gonna save that topic for when we do it. So I already got one banked, and if we do it, I'll air it. But right now, it's just going to sit there and tell we, if we do it or not. So if you don't want your uh, information on the air, just say no. Because some people, I've already had a couple people call that number just because they want to talk to me personally. So keep it to one minute or less. Like I said, uh, Kevin pushed it a little bit here, but <laughs> I let it go this time. So all standard rates apply. This is in Alabama, so if it's long distance, it'll be long distance. I think you should be all right from a cell phone. So that is about it. So it's 256 510 5234. That's 256 510 K2 D4. Dusty, I'm turning it to you. All right. Uh, uh, this was a topic actually given to me by my sister. Uh, she posted it on Facebook and she said, Hey, bro, uh, maybe this is something you might want to um, cover. And since uh, this is the first time my sister or you know any of my family's really given me a topic, I, I jumped right on it. To be <laughs> honest with you, uh, trumped what I was going to do, uh, but that will come up in, a, in another. Uh, oh, that's video. right. You did have one on the. Burner. Yeah, I did have one on the burner. Um, but this one, and not to mention, was it my sister? But then I started reading into this, and by God, if it's not that interesting, that we have to cover it. And you might have seen it. It's been in the news a little bit uh, in the last month or so, two months, three months. But an Arizona man 
is selling is sells his six point five million dollar ranch because of constant violent alien attacks. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's right. Um, John Edmonds, who has been on oh, uh, I've watched three documentaries um, or radio talk shows, kind of like what we do. Um, he was on the most famous one, I would say that everyone you know that gets more media would probably be. Uh, he was on Ghost Adventures on the Travel Channel. Okay. Yeah, last year I believe. Which I don't know how much you put <laughs> how much you put into that show, but um, so anyway, so this man uh, John Edwards moved into this ranch because he has a horse rescue, uh, and he was looking for places uh, to have horses, and they're rescuing them and whatnot from uh, rescuing from uh, like if they get lame or they get old and people don't want them, so they don't turn into glue, dog food, and jello. Um, so apparently he goes and buys this place. Uh, a little bit about John Ed- Edmonds. It's a little funny. Um, I've been told that he had, or I was read that he had a degree in psychology and I read that his wife, uh, might have worked for the government in a, like an FBI or something, but that was kind of sketchy. So, um, there's not a lot that I could find. And I spent most of my time in his story and the whole reason that he's selling this. So, Judd Emmons goes ahead and he buys this property. It's a very nice property. And in this property, he says when he first moved in, the previous owners just up and left. They had left all their stuff in this man. You know, it's a very, it's a five bedroom, five bathroom house or something. It's nice looking. He's got interviews and they, you can see inside of it. Um, but he, sell, he he goes in when he, he bought it and all the stuff was still there. So he called the, the real estate agents. He goes, hey, these people didn't take their stuff with them. And then the guy says, all right, well, I'll call them. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me, he says, I'll call him. And apparently they were supposed to get the stuff out. Well, he goes back out to the ranch and everything in the house was thrown in the pool. What kind of, okay. We're talking furniture, furniture, okay. everything else. It was thrown in the pool in the back. Um, in which case, since I know a little bit about this, apparently these aliens wanted to just throw up, have a prank or something. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so while he's. At the ranch, this man drives up, and uh, he, he gets out, he walks over, and he, he says, uh, you're the new owner, are you? And he says, I live on this on this land, and I kill the monsters. And he's got a machete. Like, he's holding a machete, which this is where I started getting really interested in how convoluted this, this topic sounds in the first place. So he just walks up, and he's holding the machete. He's like, I kill the monsters. Like, if that doesn't come out of a fantasy book, I don't know what does. Um, apparently John tells him, get off the land. It's his now. And he says, well, good luck to you because, you know, you you won't be able to do it. You know, blah, blah, blah. Guy leaves. He says, he's never seen the guy again. Okay. So they move in and not very shortly after he moves in, um, then he, the, the attacks start. Now, uh, he's been very, very clear and he tells the same story almost verbatim every time. Almost. Um, I've, I've watched, like I said, three or four interviews. Um, he's talked about the same topic. And there is a little bit of a, a change, but I suppose after retelling a story oh, so sure. long, maybe it, you know, changes. Um, so brief overview. <laughs> uh, I don't even know where to start with this one. Brief overview. Uh, so he's killed 18 great aliens uh, with a samurai sword, mind you. Yep. Um, and he kept the bodies, right? Unfortunately. Unfortunately not. Uh, uh, <laughs> wait, how do I get to the next thing here? So Convenient. Yeah, <laughs> this is the alien tissue and fluid samples preliminary report number two. So here's what happens. Not only do the aliens attack, there's por- uh, dimensional portals. Portals. He said that, um, uh, and there's ghosts. I mean, this, this place is the Disneyland of any paranormal activity that you could possibly think of mm-hmm. and aliens and everything else. So there's a portal that opens and allows the aliens to come come through in the front of the house, and then there's one in the back of the house, or like the ranch. So the, the house is here, and there's one, and this is the front of the house. There's one like over here, and there's one back here behind the house, okay? There's also interdimensional portals um, that open up in the living room, and they've had like Roman soldiers just walk in. Apparently, like, he was like, what's up? You know, tried talking to them, and then they just vanished again. Um, they've had two small children, apparently from the medieval ages, that showed up. They tried talking to them, too. Uh, probably offered them some freaking cookies. I don't know. And then they, of course, disappeared also. They don't go back through the portal? 
That uh, I don't recall him ever saying. Maybe they do. I would say that would probably be the most sense in his story to have him go back through the portal. Yeah. There's also uh, there's ghosts because um, like cans will just float up out of the air. And John Edmonds, being the cool clown collected cat he is, who's killed eighteen greys with a samurai sword, <laughs> says yeah, it happens. You know, I just not pay attention to it. <whistles> yeah. After living there for 18 years, he's decided to move because of all these uh, attacks, which took him 18 years to figure out that this ain't cool, bro. We should go. So uh, this is the tissue. Now, I brought this up because he actually has a lot of um, what happened um, to him in this. So um, during how he got these tissues. So if you you have to cut the head and the antenna off, otherwise they can keep fighting. But once you do cut the head and or antenna they have Uh, an antenna on their head yeah apparently okay yeah because that's a new one all the pictures that he has doesn't have any antenna but i'll get to that this is great but apparently once you do kill it it vanishes convenient convenient yes (laughs) so um (laughs) so they they they, they, yeah did we bring up the pictures where's the one i gotta go over like this there it is Oh. Okay, so here is a picture of the said katana and the residue left uh, from the alien. I won't say blood because we're going to get into this. They're not they're not full of blood. I would like to draw your attention to the amount of redness, though. Gotcha. Okay? <laughs> because this is one of those things that made me just kind of say, what the hell is going on? So we'll go back here. Um, so he sent this off to the University of Minnesota, Michigan. I'm sorry, I always get those messed up, and you would think I wouldn't. Um, they both start with that. What do you expect? Yeah, I'm not really good. Um, so what happened was, and I'm just, I'm gonna really, I don't, I could do this for an hour. You know, I could tear this this all apart, and I really wanted to actually kind of believe. That's you one know thing me, you're pretty good at. I know. I'm a people don't like it either. <laughs> they want a show where I'm just like aliens are real, <laughs> but I can't do it until I have the evidence. Um, so that being said, this, the blood found, the sample appears to be pure hemoglobin, like that found in the cattle mutilation sites, which appears to be segment rods in the blood, never seen anything like it. Um, so pure hemoglobin, um, and then the segment rods, they said, looked like grass, but they weren't grass. I mean, now this is interesting. This is the one part that I did find, well, not So hemoglobin the is... It's the... <sighs> We'll it's, highlight it's, it and we can do a... Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, I'm, I'm going to murder it if I try to tell you what right it is. right click. So hemoglobin is a red protein responsible for transporting oxygen in the blood. Uh, its molecule pr- comprises of four subunits, each containing an iron atom bound to a hema, heme group. Anyway, right. it's red. Now, this is really important, in my opinion, because as you can plainly tell, it's a red protein. We go back to the picture, you'll see that that's red. But somewhere down here somewhere, it says it's an oily, clear liquid. So... I'll get to that here in a second. Um, he says they all disappear. That's why he's never had these, these proteins. He, this one sample came from a little bit of the um, gristle left on his samurai sword after cleaving it in half. He also said that he, they don't even care. Like, they'll do whatever the hell they want, and, like, they won't put up a, a, a much of a fight. And then when he does kill one, the other ones, I mean, the other ones will keep walking or they're going someplace. So when he kills them, Why? If they don't put up a fight? Because here's the thing. They've attacked him. They've caused him and his wife to have, like, thyroid problems and everything else. Um, he has scars. Um, there's pictures that maybe we might get to. He's got scars where they said that he's been attacked. They apparently are infatuated with his wife because they've tried to abduct her, like, five or six times. Uh, the best part about this is uh, he awoke in bed with her being uh, levitated and taken out of the house. Well, when it happens. It happens. But that, so they're just poking and prodding. They ain't really... No, yeah, they're not really doing anything. But they have killed horses, cattle, and dogs, and that upsets him. So he doesn't want them to kill any more animals. Um, they've attacked him. They've attacked her. They're trying to—this is what gets me. They were taking her out um, by levitation. There was a saucer that, they, that you know she was being taken up into— and that's when he pulled out his AK-47, <laughs> and he made sure to mention this every time, double-clipped. I mean, I don't know if that's a clip taped to a clip so you can reload quicker, uh, but whatever. And he That's fired, what he emphasizes. He, he always mentions that. <laughs> I don't know why. 
He fires wildly into the, and it's a bright, it's a bright white light coming down, so we can't quite see his wife. So he just starts firing away, and they drop her. And he said he almost hit her with a with a bullet, or sure, or something else, right? That right. I've always had a problem with this because if you have aliens that can travel from dimension to dimension, open these gates up and everything uh-huh. else, they can't figure out a better way to abduct humans. What the? F- I mean, if I could go ahead and instantly just show up anywhere I wanted to, don't you think they just show up next to the bed? And why don't they grab them? Because they're grabbing humans and, and leaving marks, but they never grab an abductee. They've always been levitated. See, I thought you were going the different way with that, as in it's a different alien, alien from a different world. So therefore, they got superior technology. Why the f*** would you fire an AK-47? Well, that too. <laughs> yeah, it's Star Wars. Well, and, and why doesn't he shoot the aliens that he goes and attacks with a damn samurai sword? You know, he's, oh, yeah, he, yeah. he says the only way to do it is to kill him. Well, I, I'm, well maybe he didn't have any reloads. Oh, right, Christ, yeah. 18 times? <laughs> I, I'm a soldier, and here's what I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. If I have a weapon and I have a knife, and I know I have to take the, the dude's head off to kill him. I'm going to uh-huh. shoot the bastard until he's on the ground, and then I'm going to remove the head. It's simple as that. I'm not going to get up close to you to try to remove your head. I'm just going to, like, pelt you with 30 rounds. Yeah, and but then you got to go through the procedure of putting it in your freezer. Then you got to go through the procedure of the government coming, and then you got to go through the procedure of being looking like an idiot. Well, I'm sorry, but he's already done that, <laughs> in my opinion. <laughs> So anyway, and that that's just one of the issues that I have with this feller. Um, so anyway, it has, they believe that there was 100% ca- compatibility, that the two were from the same creatures. This is uh, the cattle mutilation creature and the creatures at his ranch. He even says that finally a smoking gun was absolutely linked cattle mutilations to alien life forms. One scientist was extremely elated, ex- extremely elated by this discovery. Okay, so he was very excited about the samples. This kind of gets a little bit into detail about... Um, W.C. Levengood, which was the scientist that um, did the samples. And he apparently, I can't recall, but he's done other samples for other investigations like this. And I think he's dead. Under mysterious circumstances, maybe. But I could be wrong. This might be something I should have done more research into. Might have been somebody other's sample he was looking at. Could have been. Um, But he was all excited about it. Now, these are really his words. I haven't really seen it document um but anyway it does not contain segmented fibers uh the cell parts look like joint grass but are not grass so if you look at it under a microscope it would look like a a a grass would but it's not segmented like grass is apparently and so it's not grass but so i guess the grays are uh bales of hay that aren't hay that bleed oily stuff yeah with it being alien like that you can't really tell what you're going to end up with. Very cool. Yeah, very, 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 <laughs> it very. It is cool, though. Uh, <laughs> he says, uh, John, John Edmund elaborates over this. He says, let me be absolutely clear for the record of the samples of alien DNA collected from our ranch regards of the death of the gray I killed in self-defense. I don't know why Kepsi says that, too, but after repeated home invasions. So this is where they're coming into the house to you know, harm him in some way. Um, the assaulted by these creatures were responded by the most violent behavior I could respond with because of weekly and sometimes daily confrontations during which our home and ranch horses and dogs were killed. They killed his home. Uh, <laughs> I, just, I mean, daily confrontations during which what he's saying in which our home, ranch, horses and dogs were killed. So they killed his home. They killed his ranch. They killed his horses and they killed his dog. These bastards are like Godzilla. They just walked through there and destroyed his house. That's just bad uh, writing. Our bedroom, as well as our own bodies, have assaulted, leaving bleeding holes from syringe-like wounds. Large bruises on both myself and my wife in the inner thigh, lower stomach, and upper shoulder areas has occurred on many occasions. See, this sounds like a typical abduction, but he just got so, like, crazy with it that... Yeah. So, (laughs) this is... (laughs) So... This goes back, I, I highlighted this, but I guess I already covered it. This is going back to the fluid uh, samples he immediately collected before everything disappeared from the gray alien, um, or it was at least mortally wounded. But it's funny because he says that they'll disappear mortally wounded, but then some of them don't care if the others are. It's kind of weird. Oh, here it is. A piece of actual tissue left on the sword blade at the time of incident has been in cold storage in a container to preserve it. That's how he got it. But where is that one that says where it came from? Doesn't match any plant or animal species. That's goes back to that part there we already covered. 
Oh, at the time, Loving Good stated he would prepare a report for world release to the press, and I told him, this is John, I told him to please proceed, but to release it only to me and not the general public through the news media. Interestingly enough, he's the only one that has this information. I wanted to be able to control the release of this information and wanted to su- get suggestions on the most professional and scientific method for doing such. I have a problem with this. Go figure. So he's still holding on to this? He has the information. He doesn't want to go ahead and go public with it. Um, and he's bragging about it, which will bring in government people if it's real. Right. And, and on top of that, though, he says he wanted to release it to him. He wanted to be able to control the release of this information. To me, this sounds like money. And I'll go into that a little bit here shortly, too. As it turns out, he had nothing to worry about because Levengood, the uh, scientist, stopped communicating with him. Uh, he had no more interest in it. Uh, he, After repeated efforts to obtain the report, nor any follow-up from him at all was futile. So again, so of course, he, he, he gets the review. He tells, it, he tells everybody, hey, I have actual evidence of aliens. And then, of course, the scientist that was doing it up and disappears and has the report, which he never got, of course. Um, so there we go. But this is here. This is the, I love this. Please understand the fluids left behind, and this is behind after he kills the gray, are clear in nature and slightly oily. They are easily, or they are easy to see on a surface like a glass door, a white drywall type wall, but very difficult to see against natural exposed brick wall. We have many such walls in our home. Let's let's go back here right quick. Oily and almost invisible to see, and yet we have red hemoglobin. And we have a red cement floor. Does uh, what? What's the um, time on this though? Because maybe it changes. How the hell does blood change? I cut you, and it's this is be... alien stuff we're talking about. <laughs> That's a cop out. Come on now. <laughs> anyway, so I was I found that to be interesting. Um, let's see here. <laughs> talking about um, the 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 samples and getting testing done for DNA, he said. He has recently stated to me he has made preliminary, preliminary analyses, but to complete the study, it will require an expensive lab analysis that may exceed twelve thousand dollars in cost. Holy cow! So this has got another Brian Forster on our hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if anyone's interested, contributors could fund a research through PayPal contributions, which he has a website all set up for uh-huh. you to send your money, so he can do this and many other things. Um, of he has been, he was, his request was declined to go to coast to coast. Um, oh, he wanted to go on coast yes, to coast. Yes, he wanted to go on coast to coast. But there was he. Uh, why he was declined was this interview since he, oh, him and this Daryl Feller have already done the show together on the subject one year before. So I guess he was on coast to coast once and they wouldn't bring him on a second time. Yeah, they said that's a bunch of yeah. crap. Okay, so here's some pictures. This is from the ranch. This is um, one of the Ooh. aliens. Now, this is three, and we've seen this before with the, the triangle-type UFOs. So uh, yep. you have that. Ooh, look, I can move it. Anyway, <laughs> uh, this, and, and I just... The piece of glass on the ground. <laughs> you have, this is a portal opening, uh, and this is a portal opening. But and they couldn't it, get it while yeah, it was open. No, no. No, 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 no. We can't do that. That's that's just smart. <laughs> that's the problem. Oh, there's, is there's there more? A, oh, yeah. There might, this might actually show all the pictures that I wanted to show. Oh, here's the Stardust Ranch. So that's a bruise and one of the marks he has. Scoop mark. Yep. Uh, oh, this. <sighs> so. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, while visiting the ranch, a team of investigators using a high-powered military-grade laser power detection equipment Shine such a device on a gray alien present in the northwestern section of the ranch. The gray froze in place, motionless, and then dropped the stone like object, the stone like object uh, above on the ground. Uh, he means below. One of the investigators picked up this object to hand it to me. The image, uh, when I say me, I mean John Edwards. Uh, the image would appear to be an engraving, engraving of the portal in an active state is hollowed out perfectly in the center. So he's saying that this is what the portal looks like when it's actively opening. Um, and the Ghost Adventures, they look at the stone, and it's actually wider on this side, and um, it's shorter, so it's con- it's convex, concave, conical, because it's a cone. But anyway, yeah, conical, I think, is the word. 
But anyway, it's bigger on the top of the stone and smaller at the bottom. Um, this looks to me to be perfectly put into a water jet and uh, honed out. And what do we know what material this rock it's a, is? It's no, it's a freaking rock, and somebody used. Or is um, it like a cookie? A water jet <laughs> to do it. Oh my, yeah. <laughs> Open portal on Stardust Ranch. Um, we got another portal, Stargate, uh, UFO wing. We got so many very, very... <sighs> A like, blurred photo of somebody walking yeah, away. Absolutely. I, 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 oh, wait. I wonder if I can find it. This is like a typical freaking okay. what you'd see. Yeah. It's just bad. Where's the one with the alien? This Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. There's a picture of the alien. There's a picture of the alien. Um, I don't know about you, but that looks like a toy held way too close to the camera. And the funny thing is, I don't the, see the antenna. store back there. Yeah, I just come yeah, along, antenna. man. This guy is just nuts. So th- we're gonna look at these. I'm turn the volume down on this. These are the photos. So this is just gonna go through the photos again. This is. It I mean, honest to God, I know a little bit of a photography, and just looks like someone took a, a toy and put it really close, and then got it out of frame. Again, here we go again, that same one, and because the dimensions look off, like if that was that close and he snapped a picture, this thing's only three foot, four foot tall. I, I mean, to me, it just looks like it's really small and wanky. Yeah, that's a very good point because, like you said, if you can easily hold something up to the lens and yeah. Because if I was that close to a lens being just my size, you're not going to see anything in the background. I'm going to take up most of your... I mean, I don't get it. There's a... I think this is a, a tower. <laughs> that might be a plane taking off. I don't know. Tower? I don't know. I just... I don't understand. I, I get the lights. We see that quite a bit. But that that could be easily be an airplane. I don't know if he's near an airport. But this is a portal. This is a, opened in the rear of the property. Opening or? Uh, opened. Opened. So there's when a portal opens, you don't see anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the aftermath of the gray he claimed to have killed in an attack outside his uh, carpet carport door. Again, we have a red. Uh, there's lines on the. I mean, he moved the blood around. Or it's, it would, maybe it was writhing in pain. I don't know. And the body disappears. Yeah, well, of course, yeah. And, and he's, he's got, got a, a razor sharp samurai sword. Don't don't mess with this. Where guy. is this? This is in Arizona. No, and, and what building? Oh, uh, the carport. These are the wounds of uh, regular attacks. It took him 18 years of dealing with this stuff before he decided to sell it. 18 yeah, years. Yeah, you can only take so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I watch ghost adventures and stuff. People are like, we moved in, there was a ghost. We moved the goat. You know, it's <laughs> right. just done and done. So Let's see, and I've got enough. Okay, so this is a great alien that shows up when he's doing a interview with. Oh, it's this was a female, I believe. And of course, the best was a Project Camelot. Huh? Project Camelot. I guess. Oh. All right, so we're gonna look back here. This is the best one that had the like they slowed it down. They, they had it at full speed, and then they slowed it down. Now, this is actually one of the first videos I watched. I thought it was kind of compelling because it looks like it kind of peeks around the corner um, twice. Like, it was interesting to see what was going on and got a little bit closer. So uh, now they're going to... Someone s- wants to know, yeah, why scary. would there be a okay, yep. spaceship under your house and can't you feel that? I can't... Now, watch a little bastard any, peek. I don't have any... Kind of uh, see a little bit of movement. Ability to be able to... Yeah. Okay. Or it could have been a doll. So, <laughs> see, do you know who Stan Romanek is? Because he did shit like this too. I think so. Didn't he have a house and they had it like he had a window in the back? Yeah. And, yep. So I, I kind of believed this story in the beginning, but the more I looked into it, he started faking a bunch. Yeah. Of it's like, come on. So this is, and I feel this is the same thing. If these grays are attacking him nonstop, why, why all of a sudden is a camera shy? This is supreme being type of thing, but now it's camera shy. Surprisingly, this looks just like the ones that are all blurred out on the pictures almost. And it's, it doesn't move its head. Look how it's just stiff and it's kind of. 
So I'm just, to be honest, I just don't believe any of this guy's hoo-ha. Um, he does have his own. I wonder what Kerry said about it in that interview. I actually didn't watch that interview. It's amazing enough. I watched all, I listened to three of his uh, radio things because I was doing other things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I listened to those. Um, but, yeah, so there's the alien artifact. Uh, I wonder if I can. They're going to start keep playing me from that one area, aren't they? This is John Edmonds. Uh, this is the um, Ghost Hunters. And there it is. For another ship to pick them up. So if this is real, if this really is going on here, I want to try to stimulate a, a portal to open, uh, try to call them. Um, and I just want to let you know that we are going to try to make contact with them. Is that okay? He looks sure. freaked out. Yeah. Whatever okay. you need, do it. Do if it. we get in all of his interviews, <laughs> this man is the most confident person I've ever heard. Now, is he confident because he's just gone ahead and killed eighteen greys and he don't give two shits no more? Um, does he know he's a badass? I don't know. But did you see this episode? <laughs> no. I wonder what happened. Yeah, they nothing. Yeah. Like always. Like always. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> Um, the one thing that is interesting is this isn't very far off from the Skinwalker Ranch. Um, I think it's yeah, Skinwalker it, Ranch um, is is that in, that's in Utah. Yeah, who owns that? Uh, uh, Bigelow, Robert Bigelow. It's in Utah. Yeah, I don't know who it was. So you have the Skinwalker Ranch that apparently <coughs> that apparently isn't that far off. Um, I don't know how far. And this, you know, we know, I don't, have we covered the Skinwalker Ranch? I thought we have. It was suggested we have not covered it. Might be the next one. I'm going to do ranch episodes left and right. Um, but, I mean, it's been a while here, so I'm going to wrap this up. Here's the worst part. Again, like Brian Forrester, he has done all these interviews, and he alludes to knowing these things, and he only talks about what he's killed and the report and all this other stuff. He will not, because of PTSD and he's afraid of the government, give out all the information because he's, he's gotta got a keep, book. He's got to keep some of the cards. He's got a book coming out. If you want to oh, know of course. all of John Edwin, Ed, Edmonds, um, yeah, <laughs> all of his secrets and everything that's going on in the ranch and all the things that this man has been through so much that he has PTSD and yet talks about it constantly as much as he possibly can, goes on TV and talk shows, uh, he's got a book coming out, folks. For the price, oh, the low, uh, low price of forty nine ninety nine. Yeah, it's like thirty <laughs> bucks. Um, you can pre order. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the ranch has sold for six point five million dollars. Um, How many acres? Uh, <laughs> not enough. <laughs> <laughs> he had it up for sale uh, at one point. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> he had it for sale at one point. I think two thousand eight for one point one million. He uh, won. He, his starting bid was uh, or to sell was five million, and it sold for six point five. Amer uh, apparently, um, John Edmonds. I appreciate your time and everything, but see, that's a good point. If you're if you have a house that you want to sell, amp it up a little bit. Throw some plastic dolls up. <laughs> make it on the sci-fi channel here and then channel, uh, channel, yeah, and jack the price jack up the price. <laughs> and this is a literally covered on like um the local channels around there um like coast to coast covered this guy and the, what uh, what always amazes me is if you're a true believer like I, if i ever came across some information that would prove this whether or not the government's going to come knock on my door and i'm going to disappear which would only lend credence to what i publish i'd put it out there i mean maybe that's because of what we do and why we're doing it I don't know. Maybe that's different. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, folks. I don't believe the guy. I think he's full of uh, hooey. Just <laughs> sorry, my dad's calling. He only does that once in a while. But, yeah, uh, I just I don't believe him. I, I really don't. I think he's just wanting to sell his ranch. He made all these things up. Uh, he, there's no one that's – he said, he said these, he's had people and that came over to visit and whatnot and – went ahead and had experiences, but of course, none of those people have come forward. Um, of course. No, you can't find any of them. Uh, it's just this, to me, it's just a very, very sci-fi fantasy novel. Did you say he just sold this? Uh, yeah, recently in the last, I don't know, it, it was just being covered on the news a couple months ago, so. Okay, so I wonder if the new owner had any 
Yeah, experience. I haven't seen anything about the new owner or okay. anything. Um, but no, I, I completely I love the topic because it was so exciting, mm. like to listen to him talk about it. But then once you start, you know, like by by the time my second interview or I was listening to the second interview, I instantly it was like, what the hell? Well, you know, don't believe everything you hear. <laughs> but of course, yeah, we uh, live in La La Land. Yeah. <laughs> So that being said, uh, you still go out there, do your own research, come up with your own conclusions. I'm only giving you my opinion, which is in no case, shape, or form right. It is just what I think um, and entertaining at that. Because talk is cheap. And cheap is talk. So uh, I'm Dusty Long. I hope you enjoyed the show, and I hope you tune in next time. And I'll leave Dan to say goodbye. Bye-bye, Dan Holfeld. (laughs) 